Hello and welcome back. So the first thing we're going to want to do to get started is install Quasar CLI. But first, we want to make sure that we have the right version of Node. So if you say Node-V, that's going to tell you what version of Node you have. And you want to make sure that it's greater than 12.22.1 or greater than or equal to that version. If not, make sure you update your version of Node to 12.22.1 or higher. Also, make sure that that first number is not an uneven number. Uneven numbers in Node are experimental and Quasar doesn't test on the experimental versions of Node. So you probably want to make sure you've got an even numbered version of Node anyway, unless you're one of those crazy people that likes to be on the cutting edge. All right, so the Quasar team recommends using NPM for global packages and Yarn for local packages. This is not a requirement, so you can use NPM for your local packages and local development. Yet for reasons I won't go into in this video, we found that the combination of NPM for global, Yarn for local tends to avoid the most problems. So we're going to say NPM install dash G for global at Quasar slash CLI to install the Quasar CLI. And this is going to make it a lot easier for us to develop a Quasar application. And it also gives us all of the export options like exporting to mobile, exporting to desktop, <laughs> all the other ones that Quasar gives us out of the box. PWA, SPA, SSR, you get the idea. All right, so that's done. I'm going to exit out of my terminal because you might have to do this as well. And then if I run the command Quasar here, we can tell that it has now been installed successfully. So let's go ahead and create a Quasar app. Quasar, create, and let's call it Quasar-to-do, press enter, and we can go ahead and get started. So the project name Quasar to do is fine. Product name, let's say Quasar space to do. And then the description, a to do app for Quasar. Author, I'm going to delete that as default because that's my email address. We're going to use the normal version of SAS in this video. However, if you like to use the indented style, you can go ahead and enable that. Or if you prefer to just write plain CSS, then you can choose none here. So let's choose SAS. Now we've got a few other features that we can enable. And I want to point out here, all of these features, you can actually enable them at a later state. So only choose the ones that you actually need right now. We're not going to use TypeScript because a lot of people watching this series probably won't know TypeScript. We will use Vuex and we will use Axios. Vue i18n basically allows you to create international uh, projects. So you can have different languages within your application. So we're just going to have those three options enabled. Next, it's going to ask us our ESLint preset. We are not going to use Prettier. It's a little bit overkill for this project. We're just going to choose standard. Like I mentioned before, it is recommended that you use Yarn for local development um, and NPM for global. All right, so we're going to choose Yarn here, but if you like, you can choose NPM and that will still work. Take a sip of my coffee. Ah, and we are ready to get cracking. Right, so it's letting us know what to do to get started. So let's copy this, paste it in there. And then instead of running Quasar Dev straight away, I'm going to say code space dot. In other words, I want to open this in Visual Studio Code. So we can jump out of this terminal now. I'll jump into full screen here, open up my left panel. And if we go control P and jump into index dot view, don't worry, I'm going to tell you all about what's going on in the left side here with our file system in the next video. But if you jump into index dot view, before we start setting up our editor, I just wanted to like give you a little bit of a play with some of these components. So let's say, for example, Q dash button. Oh, and we'll want to start our server. Quasar space dev. And Q dash button, let's set the label equal to click me. That's how we use Quasar's components. And note that I didn't have to import anything. Quasar automatically finds out what components you're using by looking at your template and only imports the components that you're actually using within your application. But you don't even have to say, for example, import Q button or whatever from Quasar. This is all we have to do, which is really cool. So if I open up my browser now, there's the button and there's the rest of the application around the side here. So out of the box, we get this little menu that we can open and close some essential links to allow you to get connected to the Quasar community. So I highly recommend going to the Discord channel uh, for those little edge cases where you need some help. And now let's have a little play with this button. So I might throw this onto that side of the screen, jump out of full screen, 
and hide my terminal and hide my file browser. And let's come in here and change the color of this button. How about something like blue? And in Quasar, you can also say, for example, dash two, which will give you a lighter blue, or dash eight, which will give you a darker blue. So you've got a whole spectrum there. And of course we have other colors like purple and green and orange and a whole bunch of other colors out of the box, which is really cool. Next, I wanna remove this section up here and say padding. So what that's basically gonna do is I removed the stuff that makes it centered and padding just adds a little bit of a padding outside of our window area here. So that's the Q button. Let's try another one. How about Q dash card? And inside of this Q card, we're going to have a Q dash card dash section. And this can be the title of our card. So for example, my card. And then let's have another section in here. So I'll copy paste that and let's add some lorem ipsum. So I'm just gonna type in the word lorem there. And then VS Code has this really cool lorem ipsum snippet that you can use. Save that, and there we go, we've got a card. And then you might wanna do something like this. Class is equal to background dash blue, which is going to give that a blue background. And then we can say text dash white to make the text white. And then let's just make this a little bit thinner with 350 pixels. So there we go. That's how easy it is to create a card using Quasar. What else do we wanna do? Well, let's get rid of the card and maybe add a Q-select component. This is a really awesome component that's simple to use, but also really advanced. We might even dig into it later on. So let's model some data with V-model and we'll model a variable called selected. If I scroll down here, add a comma in there and then say data. By the way, we're going to use the options API in this tutorial series. But if you wanna use the composition API, then just follow along with me and convert it to composition API as we go. It will be a really good practicing experience, but we're just going to use the options API because that's what most people are used to. And having said all of that, we will at the end of this series, convert everything to the composition API so that if you are new to the composition API, you can learn it. If you don't even know what the composition API is, completely forget about everything I said, that's totally fine. All right, so we've got selected equal to null. Let's come up here now. We're modeling selected, let's add in some options. And I'm just gonna have an array here. It can be an object, but I'm going to do an array. Luke, which is my name. Shannon, which is my beautiful girlfriend in whom I adore. Panda, which is my dog. And Lily, which is my other dog. Save that, and now we can select one of those options. And everything just always looks so beautiful with Quasar straight away with virtually no work. And we can add, for example, field here, which gives it a field style. I tend to like this style because it makes uh, the input a little bit easier to see. We can add in a label. So we could say like beings, these are all of our beings, whoops. Beings. And there we go, now we get this nice floating label there. And we've got some other options like outlined. That's kind of like in the contacts app for Google. Another thing we can do is say borderless. And this basically gives it no styling at all. So if you wanna just do things yourself or throw it inside of like a table, or somewhere else within your application, this can be a really nice choice too. That's all I'm going to cover in terms of components. This was just to give you a taste. But first, we need to make sure that our editor is prepared for working with Quasar. And this part might not be as fun, but I promise you're going to love the benefit that it gives to you. So let's go to quasar.dev and jump into Quasar version two beta. Um, you might actually get this uh, site by default because it's going to be a later date for you. Now, if I click on this menu here, we wanna to go to getting started and then jump into VS Code configuration. This is going to show us how to configure VS Code for Quasar. Now, first of all, make sure you have these extensions installed. So you can do that by saying Control Shift X, searching for the extension, for example, ES Lint. And you'll notice I've already got it installed, but you wanna make sure that you've got that installed and ready to go. Now, and same with Vetter, it's very important you have Vetter because that gives you a whole bunch of like um, single file component functionality. Next, update VS Code settings for standard. So let's close that menu there. If we say Control Shift P, open settings, then we have this settings file here. And this basically is to configure Visual Studio Code. And we wanna take everything inside of this object here, inside of the object, copy it, and then just paste it in there. And you're probably going to have to add a comma at the end here as well. 
Yeah, so this part here, you'll have to add a comma in there. Now, I'm getting all these errors because I've already done this, but that's something you'll have to do to get really nice formatting with Quasar. I'll show you it in a second when we're done here. So if we say Control P ES Lint, this is our ES Linter file, and then we scroll down a bit here. Now, by default, we've got some very loose linting. View 3 Essentials is very loose linting, which means it's not going to give you that much help. So I'm going to comment that out and then bring in View 3 Recommended. This is going to give us a lot more linting, which means that when we save our component, it's going to format our file to make it beautiful. And this is great because it means that your code is automatically going to follow a lot of conventions that you want to be following when writing Vue 3 code. So now I'm gonna open up my terminal, restart the server with Quasar Dev, and we're going to get one error here. Oh, we actually got a few errors here, and that's good. So check this out, if I go into index.view, notice I get this squiggly line under here now, which is exactly what we want. It's basically saying, this isn't formatted to the Vue 3 standard, to the, to the linting best practices that you wanted to follow inside of your ESLint RC file. So if we come back here and save it, it's automatically going to format it for us. How cool is that? Now, if I open up the terminal, we've actually got one more warning and that's sitting in the error 404 view file. So let's open that up. Error 404, this is something we get def uh, by default with Quasar. And it's just basically saying these attributes should be on a different line. So let's save that. It fixes it for us. Open up the terminal and scroll to the bottom. There we go, everything is green now. So there you have it. We've got linting set up, our code's looking great. The next thing we wanna do is jump into this config VS code section again. And I recommend, if you don't know what any of these are, these recommended extensions do, just go ahead and install all of them. It's really not going to slow down your editor that much. But if you have an idea of these different extensions and what they might actually do behind the scenes, then you can basically cherry pick the ones that are suited for your dev environment. And when you're done installing the extensions that you want to use, you're then going to want to open settings.json, right? Control Shift P, open settings and then paste any of these sections in here that make sense to the extensions that you installed. So if you installed all of them, you would literally just come in here and copy all of that, come down here and paste it directly in there, and then add that little comma in. Obviously, I don't have to do that because I've already done this behind the scenes. But that's how you do it, and then your editor is completely ready to start developing using Quasar. Congratulations, in the next video, we can start working on our project. So I am super excited. Thank you so much for following along in this video and I will see you in the next one where we start building our to-do app. Bye for now.